the ultimate name, the ultimate name you could ever call God is Father. This name makes him melt like a candle. You can call him the Almighty. You can call him the All-Powerful. You can call him the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, Elohim, El, El Shaddai. You can call him whatever name and he is worthy of every name. But there is one name. He dies. He dies to hear it from his children. Every time you pray, say, our daddy who art in heaven. Look at the Lord. Can you teach us how to pray, Lord Jesus? He said, every time you pray, you say, our daddy. Now, by the way, the Lord taught the, uh, this prayer, the Lord's prayer. He taught it in Aramaic, Syriac, not in Hebrew, in Aramaic. Now, the Aramaic language is the informal. It's the slang. Hebrew was the formal language, the language of the book. But Aramaic is the slang language. So when you want to pray the Lord's Prayer, literally we should say, Our Daddy who art in heaven, not Father. Because the word Father is the formal way of referring to my Father. But the informal is Dad. When you living with your dad at home, do you call him Good morning Father? Or do you call him Hi Dad? How are you Dad? He's your dad. There is no formalities. There is no boundaries. There is no limits. He's your dad. You don't speak in the formal way. You speak informally. Why? Because daddy. I speak formal with strangers, but informal with family members. So the Lord prayer should transliterate into our daddy who art in heaven, not father. That's the Aramaic, Abon Bashmeyo or Awon Bashmeyo. Abon or Awon literally means dad. Daddy. We need to come to learn how to love daddy. So when people say, why did Jesus die on the cross? What kind of a God is this? What kind of a God would come down and become a man? That is humility. God is too powerful. God is too exalted. God is too distant. God is beyond all of this for God to limit himself and become a human being living in this flesh, this weak flesh. What kind of a God? let alone this God becoming a man, then being dragged in the streets of Jerusalem, whipped, kicked, punched, spat on and told off and then nailed on the cross naked, fully naked from head to toe. What kind of a God is this? My dear friend, let me tell you, you have not understood the concept of love. You haven't. If you had understood the concept of love, you wouldn't have opened your mouth in the first place. You see, when God is love, love gives birth to children, not slaves. Is anybody home? Since God is love, love gives birth to sons, not slaves. To sons, not slaves. The master would not give one penny about their slave, but the father will hurt himself in order for this, for this child of his to be safe and sound. So God is love. Therefore, love gives birth to sons, not slaves. He is the father. And as the father, the father, he will do the impossible to save his child. He died on the cross. 
What is dying on the cross? Love. I love you so much, I am willing to put my life on the line for you. Sacrifice. Love equals sacrifice. And this is why the Lord Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross to say this is what true love is all about. True love, even when it suffers the most, but cannot do anything but love. You can hurt me, but I will never hurt you. You can deny me, but I will never deny you. You can walk away from me, but I will never walk away from you. You can easily sell me with 30 pieces of silver, but I will purchase you with my own blood, my own life. Because simply, I am love and I love you. And love can only do one thing, is to love no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. Love can only love. There cannot be contradiction in true love. There cannot. This is why Jesus Christ will never change. This is why Jesus Christ will never change. Whether we love him or not, he is love. Whether we accept him or not, he is love. Whether we come or leave him, he is love. Parents can only love their children even if their children hurt them. Maybe the child walks away, leaves home and live on their own. Deny mom and dad, but mom and dad, they will always shed tears for that child who walked away from them. Always. Like somebody put it this way. He said, when a father smacks his son for being naughty. You know, it's okay sometimes to smack him. Or in Australia, you're in deep trouble. They'll call triple zero and put you in the cage. Fairfield State Police Station. Get a life. I'm at least in mate. I discipline my son my way. Okay? You government... Leave me alone. I'll smack him on the nappy. When a father smacks the son, the son feels the pain. He may cry. He may not like his dad for that moment, for that day, for that week. But after a week, after a month, the son forgets the smack. The father never forgets that he once upon a time, smacked his son. And every time the father remembers it, I'll say this, he never likes himself. Why did I smack my son? But the son forgets, the father never. Because this is my son. I love him more than me. And if I hurt him, I'm hurting myself a million times moreover. If he sheds one tear, I'll shed a million. If he cries once, I'll cry a million. If he falls once, I'll fall a million. Because I'm dead. God is dead. God is dead.